Hi, it's MJ Calloway coming from my tiny bounce up studio. And I have Kelly Commander in the audience. Well, actually in the studio. And you met Kelly earlier in the 21 days. She is just a reminder. She is the force behind the book project 21. And today I'm actually having the tables turned on me because Kelly is interviewing me today instead of me interviewing others. So welcome, Kelly, and thank you so much for switching the tables on me. Absolutely. This is so much fun. I have never done an interview before like this. And to interview you, of all people, MJ Calloway, is super exciting. So thank you so much for allowing me to do this. Absolutely. And thank you for the opportunity to be in your fabulous book that I know so many people are going to get so much information out of. It's such an amazing project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to be real official now. And I'm going to introduce you, MJ, just like I am Oprah interviewing a very important person in the world. So here we are, everybody. I am in the Bounce Up studio and MJ Calloway is an award-winning author motivational speaker and a corporate trainer known for shifting attitudes and converting strategies into results. She is a two-time cancer survivor and she is your source for getting unstuck and nailing your results. So here we are in her own studio. We are welcoming MJ Calloway. Thanks, Kelly. So I'm going to start off, let's go back to last year, back to 2020. Okay. What was the defining moment that you had during 2020 where you knew you had to, to shift, do something different, take action, make changes? Oh, and for most people, 2020 started, or when they think of 2020, they relate 2020 to today. It started with the pandemic for them. And for me, it actually started on New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, when I just imagined everybody else was, you know, toasting champagne and having their sauerkraut and their pork or whatever their tradition was, I was actually guzzling water and Tylenol because I, a few days before that, I had had a major surgery and it was a few days into an eight week recovery. And as I sat on that sofa, and, and yes, I had my family, my kids wanted to spend time with me. However, I didn't want, because the surgery was such a major surgery, I only wanted to stay in my pajamas and didn't want to talk to anybody. You can imagine. <laughs> so with it, I thought about, okay, life is so unpredictable. And I've had several times in my life where things have been unpredictable. And I knew that I needed to make some changes in my business and in my business model in order to move forward in not only 2020, but in the future. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not a good way to start off the year, you know, not even knowing what was coming down the road, you know, with, you know, COVID and, and the lockdowns and everything, that's a rough way to start a brand new year. So what was the action that took place? You know, once you determined you needed to make changes and, and adapt your business, what did you do? It actually, and, and I know this sounds really strange to say this, but every surgery, and I've had several of them, every surgery has actually been a defining moment for me. And that New Year's Eve going into New Year's Day, really that defining moment that I needed to make change was a good thing for me in my business. It really was. And what I discovered was I needed to do the research and similar to what you did, you did research you know, to start your business. Mine was on business models because at the time I had two. It was speaking to audiences, conferences and so forth. And then it was going on site to companies to give training. While I was recovering from those, those surgeries, I decided that I needed to have a business model that brought in passive income. So that business model needed to do what it could do when it came to digital programs. I had so much content, Kelly. I mean, you've been in my workshops. I have yes. so much content. And I knew that I needed to get that into digital mm -hmm. programs. 
So doing the research to find the business models that would work for me. And I ended up coming up with a couple that I meshed together. So during that eight weeks that I had, I call it sofa surfing, I actually came up with a plan. That was my action step, you know, from that aha moment. So coming up with a plan to be able to implement Wow. And it's like you knew, you know, from some magic way that you were going to need to go digital anyways because of everything that was going to happen in March. It was like a like a sixth sense that told you I need to make sure that I'm adapting, you know, not just because I'm sofa surfing for eight weeks, but mm -hmm. because people are going to need to connect with me. They're going to need training. They're going to need all these things on a virtual level. Exactly. It's almost like the universe opened up or my higher power opened this up, this opportunity to use that time. At the time, I was researching equipment so that I could do my, you know, build my tiny bounce up studio. I was researching microphones and webcams and had those all in place before the pandemic ever hit. I was also using Zoom on a regular basis because I was still talking to clients and I was doing it through Zoom. So by the time the pandemic hit, I had a jump start. So That's even incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how, you know, similar to you when you were laid off, it actually takes you to a better place. Crazy. It does. And I know that you probably have the same struggles that I do, that you don't want to tell people that, you know, a global pandemic helped you build upon your business and, and make it bigger. But, you know, in reality, it's true. There are a lot of businesses who have thrived through this. Yes. So how would you say that, you know, people who are watching this and people who are going to purchase the 21 book, how would you say mm -hmm. that what you're talking about, how can they apply this to their businesses and to their professional lives? So one of the things that I would suggest is to look upstream. And it is something I'm going to say that I haven't always done in the past. So when I say look upstream, look about being proactive to where you want to be long-term. And I'll give you an example, the an analogy that makes it easier to understand. So I love Mustangs. So the, the Mustang car, it's one of my favorite cars. And in fact, I love the 67 Shelby convertible, white with black stripes. However, I live in Pittsburgh. You know, Kelly, we live in Pittsburgh. So if I would buy that in the summer, I'm not looking upstream. I'm not looking for long term because we live in a place that gets a lot of snow. We also have a lot of hills and we still have roads that have brick roads. So imagine taking that Shelby up one of those red <clears throat> brick roads in the middle of winter. And my destination where I want to be is at the top, my goal for my business. And I'm taking it up. Well, there's no way I'm getting up there. I'm just sliding backwards. Without looking upstream, we never get to where we want to be. We don't look at the long term. Instead, we're being reactive to what is coming at us instead of being proactive to where we need to be. So look where, not where you want to be today, but look to where you want to be three months from now a year from now, and how that is going to impact you three years from now. Does that make sense? It does. And that's actually great advice because I think that people get that tunnel vision or that, you know, everybody wants instant gratification. You know, you email, you want a response right away. You text somebody, you want a response, response right away. And what you're saying is, you know, whatever's happening now is happening now. And you need to plan, like you said, for three months, you know, six months, three years down the road. I think that's a really smart piece of advice. So that's incredible. Thank so you. Your, um, your book, um, Bounce Up, just came mm -hmm. out not too long ago, correct? Um, was it during 2020? It was. It was. I it was April so. 24th of 2020. Wow. Um, you believe it's almost been a year. But, I know. Um, so talk to me a little bit or talk to the viewers also a little bit about the difference between bounce back and bounce up. Oh, I'll be happy to. And thank you for asking. Bounce back. Think about this. 
bounce back takes you back to where you were before you ever hit any type of setback or adversity. And having been through cancer twice, the last place I want to be is back to where I was before the cancer hit or well, before I was diagnosed with it. You know, think about it. Do you want to go back to where you were before you started your business? No. And that's bounce back. And I like to use the analogy with it. Do you know, maybe one of your kids had it or one of your neighbors. It's one of those inflatable punching bags that have sand on the bottom mm -hmm. and it's stationary. You punch it, it bounces right back to where it was. It never moves. It never grows. When we think about bounce up, think about a basketball player. And I love to use Wilt Chamberlain because he has the most rebounds ever. And I think it's thousands before somebody catches up to him. So he'll probably hold the record for a while. But the, a basketball player who reaches up and grabs that ball, he rebounds higher than anyone else. He gets that ball. He controls that ball. He controls the next play. And that next play could possibly control the game. So it is controlling what you can control instead of letting everything else control you. So that's why bounce up is, for me, it's so important. Wow. I mean, that that really resonates and that really makes sense. And I think that when you put it into perspective of saying, you know, do you really want to bounce back to where you were at any point in your life, sure. There's wonderful years that, that we've all had where we would say, hey, I'd like to go back to that time, maybe when my kids were small or, you know, and a grandparent was still alive or something along those lines. But, you know, where you're talking about and coming from makes total sense. I will never use the term bounce back. I will never use that term again. Everything will be bounce up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. So MJ, let everybody know how to get in touch with you. Um, I know that this is your YouTube channel, but some folks might not be aware of, you know, what avenues to reach out to you, how to connect with you. So go ahead and give everybody some info. Oh, thank you for that offer. I would love you to connect on my YouTube channel. It's MJ Calloway. And my last name is spelled as if you were spelling Calloway Golf, C-A-L-L-A-W-A-Y. Sometimes people want to throw an O in there, but it's always Calloway. And also through Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, it's MJ Calloway. Be happy to connect with you, or you can reach out to me on my website, and that's mjcalloway.com. That's incredible. This was so much fun. I may have to take over your channel again at some time. Um, I may have to sit in as like a, uh, a, a spare interviewer if uh, you need a helping hand because I really enjoyed this. This was great, MJ. We can definitely do that. Maybe we'll both interview Corey. Maybe we'll do that together. That would be fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would be awesome. The more the merrier. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. This is MJ Calloway signing out and be sure to stay tuned for the other episodes where we will be interviewing contributors from the book project 21.